this is just gonna be so much fun. All right, so I have a situation here. What's my situation? My situation is that this doesn't work. Yeah, it doesn't work. There's a lot of things that are gonna have to happen here. So first of all, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, um, make myself some, some mountains back here that look a little bit more the way that they should look. And I don't really want like a tangent, so. Daisy, can you get out of here? And you know, okay, so like for some of you that are new to painting, um, you might be wondering why in the world is she putting the purple in the background like that? Or maybe you don't wonder. Maybe you don't even care for all I know. I don't know. Um, okay, so the reason that I am putting the purple in the background is to push it back. Mm -hmm. I am pushing it back. I'm also going to be shortening that... Um, the top here and the reason for that is because because it's too tall too round so right now what I got going on is that I don't have enough paint on my brush. I should be able to just lay it down like that.
so basically when I put um, the purple in the mountains like that, it is pushing those mountains to the back. You ever heard of Purple Mountain Majesty? Huh. Yeah. But anyway, so putting the purple in there helps to push that to the back. And then it's also kind of grayed out, so uh, that pushes it back even further. And here I'm graying it a little bit further. Right here, I'm just darkening the mountains on the right to bring them forward. Take note of the way that I'm holding the brush here. This is the correct way to hold it. You don't want to hold it like a pencil and you don't want to hold it too close to the bottom or near the ferrule. So I'm keeping my paints transparent so that I don't get into too much trouble. Um, if I keep them transparent, then they won't get all muddy and all over the place. So what you can see me doing now, I'm kind of doing some measuring and redrawing. Measuring with my brush.
this bug is giving me some major hard times. You know? Give me some serious hard times. I think I thought I was done with it a couple times. And then I just like start it over. So the complete start over again. That happens. I'll finish a painting and then I'm just not happy with it even though it might look all right. But maybe something, you know, and I know that <clears throat> many of us are that way. Something will tell me now. It's not good enough. Something will say no. Do it again. Or whatever. So then I do this. And I know that the, all the colors aren't correct at this point. All I'm trying to do is get a general feel for the uh, shape here. Okay, we're getting closer, I think. I need to change some angles. Are we still recording? Yes, we are. Look how dark that car is. I'm gonna have to make that car not dark. That's my job. Is to make that car not as dark as that car is. I wish this was more transparent. I should have done something really cool, making that transparent. Oh, no. like, I feel like I have to do something about it. Okay, but not right now. All right, so anyway, let me get back to this and let me try to figure this out. Why can't I get this angle? So. Okay, I'm gonna take a little bit of purple, which is transparent. And I am going to I think this is this is a lot bigger than what I show it. Okay, what's the shape? There we go. Okay, that's getting better. That's getting better. Yes, yes, yes. Getting a little bit better. Okay, I think kind of go into the, the shape. It gets better.
What's aggravating me at this point is that I am getting my paint dirty. So I'm putting transparent paint into that area and rebuilding it, but because I've already got this opaque paint into it, it keeps mixing into it, and that's frustrating me. So I probably shouldn't have put those things into it. I probably should have, you know, painted the shapes with the dark and the transparent first and then come back later on top of that once I have my shape together.
Am I still recording? Yep. Yep. yep, 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 yep. Okay. Oh. Lord, is this going to get better. You wonder, right? Yeah, me too. Okay, so what is going on? It's the shape is too. It's too big. Here I had decided to just go ahead and scrape out that gray paint uh, because it was messing me up so bad. And so I did that. And then as you can see, I'm scraping out all the windshield where I didn't like the transparency. Too much opaque paint used in there or it was an accident of some sort. I'm not sure exactly how that happened. But I'm wiping it all out and uh, making it as fresh as I can so that I can go over it with transparent paint and just give it a little more depth and, you know, make it look a little bit better.
here what I'm doing is wiping the paint out with the turp. So I cleaned my brush and then I just wiped the opaque paint, the gray, which was the bumper. I wiped it out so that I could raise the, um, the car up. I didn't like the angle. I don't like the angle that it's sitting at. So this is a lot of the problem I'm having. I'm working out all my problems, even though this thing is giving me the hardest time ever. I'm determined. I'm going to get this done. I'm going to work the problems out. I'm going to make it look good. And that's what you have to do. So that's what I'm doing. I'm not going to give up. As a new painter, what usually happens is we give up. So if you don't want to be a new painter, then keep pushing through the problems, keep trying, persevere, keep doing it. You know, you'll eventually, I mean, you can, you can make it work for yourself. Anything is fixable, especially when you're painting with oil paint. What's going on here is that I've basically got a foreshortening problem or a um, perspective problem. So I'm probably not measuring the way that I should be. I'm not taking enough uh, <laughs> like um, daring uh, moves, I guess. I'm not trying new stuff. So when I get a little looser with my brush, then I can finally see where this angle is. And so here it's starting now, it's starting to come together. And as I pull my tire down further, then I feel much more comfortable with, um, with how it looks. So here, this is where I'm starting to get a little more daring. I'm like, okay, pull it out a little bit further. Maybe this will work. Maybe this will look right. And it's easy to just keep on trying. And, and you know, if you make a mistake, who cares? Wipe it out. Man, this is like one seriously broke down car, huh? Woo! Broke down. What's wrong, Des? Mm. I'm wiping the paint out right here. 
because that paint is opaque and I want my shadow to be right there next to the car. So I'm basically making the car bigger and as it gets bigger, it's running into the opaque paint. And as it ran into the opaque paint, of course it's giving me some trouble. So I did some things that I shouldn't have done. Anyway, next time, uh, I won't make those same mistakes. But um, so as I'm making the car larger here, uh, running into my opaque paint, now as I take out the um, that, that opaque, can then crazy. I can put in transparent to make my, uh, my shadow look better. This is one of the worst problems. I keep changing the shape, I'm changing the width, I'm taking out the opaque paint, I'm putting in, uh, <clears throat> making the, the bug larger, wider, then adding more shadow. So it's starting to get a little bit better. I'm redrawing, that's why you see me, I'm constantly redrawing the shape, because as I'm redrawing the shape, I'm making it larger, wider. You know, as I struggled with this, I had to uh, <clears throat> I had to break it down into shapes, and uh, you know, try not to see the the car as a whole, but to break it down into there's a triangle next to the uh, the left light, and that triangle is orange and it's shaped like this. So I tried to really reduce it down into smaller shapes. And as I did that, it started to get a little easier. It started to come together a little bit faster. Um, so, and see, you can see, this is about the second or third time that I've raised that uh, front. Bumper, the front bumper. And uh, I had the, right there what I'm doing is I'm putting in a little bit of um, a cool color at the back to push it back and to also show like a little bit of a glare on the car. And back with the shapes again because I made it larger.
drawing it back in again. And then, of course, when I change the one on the left, the front light on the left, then I have to go back over and make sure that the proportions are correct on the right one. And they're not yet. <clears throat> but they'll get closer. I think that little bit of that shadow that I put at the top of the light, or the little bit of the glare, that bluish glare, I think that that really helped it. Also making that uh, windshield transparent was a big help. And that little touch of uh, sunlight right behind that front tire on the right. That's cool. Trying to pull some more of that paint out of there. Then I'm going back now with transparent. Drawing those windows back in. And then there's the transparent paint, which I'm using to signify basically seat backs. Okay, now it's getting wider, so it's starting to look better. And I'm just starting to realize that. I'm also drawing my lines in, you know, uh, drawing the perspective lines in from one tire to the other tire. You're going to see me do that a few times. That also helps the painting. It helps draw the eye in a particular motion. You know, our eyes will actually follow the brush stroke. So it's important that your perspective is correct. Also here when I'm drawing in the lines of the car, kind of some racing lines that they have, um, I'm doing it in the direction of the hood. So the hood's curved, so I want to make those lines curved as well. That's just a dark opaque shadow that I'm putting right underneath. To give a little more dimension. And then that brush stroke right there just helped tremendously. I probably just realized that. Yep, it did because they keep going over it. What I'm doing right now is I'm fuzzing uh, the background. So what I was doing was going over that those strokes and making it so they're not um, they don't stand out. They're smooth. And if you smooth them, it appears that the back is pushing away further. So, there's some opaque paint that got stuck in that, in that windshield still, I see. But uh, I'm making some changes, so I may fix that, I hope. <laughs>
I'm using a transparent cadmium red here just to give it a little more sunlight and uh, makes it look a lot better, doesn't it? Not as dark. I'm starting to put a little more opaque paint into this. Some bright red cad, making it kind of pinkish um, to blend and to give the illusion of more light on the, the car.
So just added some highlights here uh, in pink and then also in a radiant lavender. Helps give the car more dimension. It's kind of coming together.
And my lovely camera moved again. Thankfully I noticed that right away. So I'm just using some yellow ochre and uh, painting in the background, the desert background. I initially made the driveway a uh, warm color because it was such a sunny day, um, but then I realized that the concrete was a little cooler and it actually looked better against that, um, against that shadow as soon as I brought the cool in. So, I decided to go with that. In there I just used a Portland Cool Gray. So here I'm doing a little bit of wipe out with my wipe out tool and what was kind of neat about this is that uh, on the tires there's a lot of warmth uh, almost making the tires a little bit brown and when I wiped it out it almost mimicked exactly what is naturally happening. So that was a pretty cool accident. And then as I did some wipe out in the back, I just noticed like, hey, you know, that looks pretty good just like that. It's the same, um, same kind of a look as in the front. And that's basically how it actually looked in person. I started with a white canvas for this painting and I don't normally do that. I usually put something in the background like a burnt sienna is where I would start. Uh, or I really like to paint with pinks and reds. Um, but uh, this time I didn't do that and you're going to see one of the reasons why you would want to um, coming up here, like when I try to put my signature in, oh, it's such a fail. So then I have to go in and, um, and paint it in. And it's a lot harder to paint your signature in than it is to just write it in with the, with the remove paint tool. So, uh, and the reason why I couldn't use the remove the paint tool for my signature is because behind it, it's just so light. It doesn't really show up. 
So, and if I had made it, you know, maybe burnt sienna, then it would have shown brightly. I tried to put the windshield wipers in there, but I didn't like what they looked like, so that's, you just saw me brush it out. Now, I should probably try to come back in there and then wipe that opaque paint out that I just put in there. I'm not sure if I'm going to do that, but I hope I do. Maybe not. Um, but adding a little more dimension to this painting, giving it more of a realistic look, uh, that's, you know, cement that it's sitting on. So you probably noticed that I had that little white spot right there. And what that is, is that's reserved for the whitest spot on the canvas.
And there was that epic failure that I told you about. So then I tried this pretty lavender, but it's too light. It doesn't look right. So then I tried to make it darker. That doesn't work. Too light. And there I am with the red. And the scrape out. Hate it. Do it again. And you thought it was just you. That's funny. I seem to have a habit of thinking I'm finished with the painting, signing it, and then continuing to paint. Sometimes scraping the whole thing out and starting all over again. Those are the great ones. One of the things that I learned from one of my teachers was Quang Ho and he taught that if you don't like it scrape it out and you know do it again so he was painting with a palette knife at that time and uh, he you know was doing like a, a, a snow scene and he just kept scraping it out he didn't like it and each time he scraped it out it would leave behind a little bit of the former painting which actually helped him to build on top of that and uh, those are one of you know his techniques and I have tried it a few times and it does help tremendously you know when you're lost which <clears throat> excuse me I did hear quite a few times I, I scraped out but in Kwong Ho's fashion you would actually scrape the whole, you know, thing out and then just start over again, which I think I should have done. And I wouldn't have had probably nearly as much trouble. Also, in the scrape out, it might have given me a lot more dimension. I, I might have been able to see that car, the shape of the car a lot better. Um, I also noticed that when I first started with my, my layout of the painting, the bones of the painting, I don't think that uh, they were good enough. I don't think they were accurate enough. And I think if I had laid down a better start, then it would have been a lot easier to uh, get to my finish. But anyway, that was my first try ever painting a car, and it was a lot of fun. I would do it again, and um, I took lots of pictures of, I, I had this Mustang, so I'll probably be painting that soon. 
and I'll post a picture of that. My Mustang was white and convertible and beautiful. And um, so that'll be an interesting project to, to show you, painting in whites. Uh, but I hope that you enjoyed my effort and I hope that you learned something. Um, please subscribe to my channel if you want to see more painting videos and comment down below and let me know how you feel about speed paintings and the videos that I'm producing and let me know what you would like to see more of. Thank you for watching.